What's up YouTube, it's Brax Tech again. I have another laptop that I think you guys might find interesting. Um, I managed to get my hands on a ThinkPad P1 Gen 5 workstation laptop. It's running Intel's latest 12th gen processors. This specific unit is running a i7-12800H. And the only main difference there is that the uh, 800H versus the 12700H is that it has a slightly faster boost clock, like maybe 100 megahertz faster. It's running in RTX 3070 Ti Mobile, so eight gigs of VRAM. This one is a hundred watts total graphics power after dynamic boost. 16 gigs of RAM in dual channel, DDR5 4800 megahertz, and a 500 gig NVMe SSD running at Gen 4 speeds. And it could be had for about $2,100 right now after a few coupon codes. Um, I'll have all of the details in the description of what I used and how I applied them. It also will depend, you know, what your, what your local market looks like, what deals Lenovo is running in that market, and so on. Uh, but yeah, let's get right into it. All right, so the first thing I want to start off with are just the port selection. So I'll start on the right-hand side here. So we have a Kingston Lock, two USB 3.0 Type-A ports, and then an SD Express 7.0 card reader. And then on the left-hand side here... We have the 230-watt slim tip charging port, and if you configure it without NVIDIA graphics, I believe you get a 180-watt adapter. We have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, both of which support power delivery and DisplayPort 1.4. Uh, an HDMI 2.1 port. It is 2.0 if you do not have an NVIDIA graphics card, so it will run at a lower bandwidth. And then a 3.5mm headphone jack. Um, so great I.O. You'll have a little bit of everything. You're not limited to just type C or anything like that. You have a full suite of ports at your at your use. Um, overall, chassis rigidity is fantastic. I believe it's using um, carbon fiber reinforced polymers on the top cover and then on the bottom is aluminum. There's really no flex at all on this device. I'm I'm trying to bend this pretty hard and it's not budging at all. Keyboard deck is also pretty rigid. I'll open this up and do a flex test for you. And there's really not any flex at all, which is fantastic. You know, especially as something that you're bringing around with you every day. And it's not exactly heavy either. This is just over four pounds. From my measurement, Lenovo says 3.99 pounds. So very, very lightweight for a 16 inch device that's running a vapor chamber for its cooling solution. I will say the keyboard is a little bit of a downgrade. Uh, it seems like the keys, and I don't know if you guys will be able to see this from this angle, they're a little bit more shallow than usual. Typing on it feels pretty similar. I mean, the layout is identical and everything like that, um, but it doesn't feel as rewarding. It doesn't feel as tactile, it doesn't feel as good. Not to say that you can't type on it at the same speeds, but it's just not as a nice of an experience. Trackpad is glass. I believe they're using the same trackpad as they did from the P1 Gen 4 and the X1 Extreme of last generation. It's glass, tracks nicely. It's a little small considering there's a lot of wasted space up at the top. In my opinion, they could have moved all of this up a little bit and then spread the vertical real estate of the trackpad to give you more of an XPS or MacBook experience. Um, but again, it is still much better than some of the older ThinkPads that were running up like a plastic or a Mylar trackpad. Um, it's very smooth. All of my gestures work nicely on it. No complaints on that. Speakers are running two two watt speakers. Um, really nothing to write home about. They're average to above average, but they're not going to compete with some of the MacBook Pros of the world. And I think the XPS 15, in my opinion, performs a little bit better on it. Uh, the display is what is also very interesting, and I'll get into a little bit more detail later, but it is a 16 by 10 QHD 165 hertz display. Yes, it is 165 hertz on a workstation device, so some people might actually buy this and be like, wow, I could actually run some games on this. Um, and despite the 3070 Ti being limited to 100 watts, uh, yes, you certainly can play games on this thing. I wouldn't recommend it. I think the cooling solution is not really built and designed for that. Um, but you certainly can get away with it if you really wanted to, to use this as a secondary gaming device in a workstation first. Some of the other things that I wanted to cover for this part were really just the physical dimensions, like the specifically what they're measured in at. So it's about 14 inches wide, 10 inches long, and I believe it's three quarters an inch, like 0.7 inches thick. Um, but overall, I would say it's a fantastic device in terms of chassis rigidity, portability, and like the input 
devices that you use to interact with the device day to day are perfectly fine. I don't think anybody will have complaints, um, except if you're used to the, some of the older ThinkPad keyboards that have slightly larger, uh, slightly higher depth and more travel. So let's move on to the internals. Getting inside is really easy. There's only seven captive Phillips screws. Um, you don't have to worry about different screw links or anything like that. They stay in the bottom panel. And then all you do is just pry from the back here. I've already done that. And this comes off really easy. So we'll run through some of the, uh, some of the parts in here and talk about some of the shortcomings and everything like that. So first, so the two RAM slots here are DDR5 SO DIMM slots. My unit came with two 8 gig DIMMs running at 4,800 megahertz, and these are Samsung modules. I'll have the specific part number in the description in case you are curious or want to purchase some for yourself. Um, the battery here is a 90 watt hour battery. Um, expect anywhere between four to six hours of usage depending on your screen brightness and your load type. So if you're doing heavier like renders or video editing and stuff like that, obviously your battery life will be significantly worse than if you were to just, you know, open Excel and run a few, like run some simple formulas, watch YouTube, uh, you know, Slack, Teams, uh, stuff like that. Um, it is running a vapor chamber cooling solution. This specific um, heat pipe slash vapor chamber combo is only available in units that come with an A3000 NVIDIA GPU or higher, including the 3070 Ti and 3080 Ti. But as a shortcoming of the upgraded cooling solution, you only get one M.2 Gen 4 slot instead of two. Um, one of the things I do want to call out because a lot of people purchasing uh, these workstations often dual boot. So they'll run Ubuntu or Linux on one drive and Windows on another. Um, you really can't do that anymore. Um, to have two separate drives, you'd have to partition one larger one and then dual boot that way. The only other thing that I wanted to call out specifically um, is that the Wi-Fi card on this thing is soldered, which I believe, you know, if this thing fails, and I'm going to try to get it on the camera here, if this thing fails, the entire motherboard would have to be replaced unless you are really, really technical and you're somehow able to desolder the existing one, get another unit and solder it back on. Um, and the other thing I wanted to call out, and I'll just right here, it is a warning for those that are a little bit eager to tear into the device and don't know, there is liquid metal on both the GPU and CPU. And I already have torn this device apart. I will have some photos for you guys to take a look. There are some barriers and safeguards in place, uh, similar to what Asus has done. Um, so not to worry too much about something leaking and damaging your device. I would say Lenovo did a fantastic job protecting the internal components, uh, but just some things for you guys to be aware about. So the last piece of all of this obviously is going to be performance and thermals under load. So I have a few benchmarks that I went ahead and took for you guys. I have um, a single run of Cinebench R23 as well as a 10 minute score to test for throttling. All of the temperatures for the temp sensors on the right. So package temp, um, each individual core temperature, uh, power draw, all of that stuff is gonna be found on the right uh, for the Cinebench scores and then all of the detailed information on TimeSpy, Port Royal, and the other GPU uh, benchmarks are going to be found in my written review, which I'll also link down below. I posted that to Reddit not too long ago, um, but we'll dive right into it. So I'll start off with the single run score of Cinebench R23, which netted us a score of about just under 18,000. So we have 17,875. We have a max uh, core temperature on the package of 97 degrees Celsius with multiple cores hitting 97 and the rest being at 90 to 95 degrees on the right here. So I'll just go ahead and zoom in a little bit here for you so you guys can see. Um, so obviously with one run taking approximately, I want to say it was like 45 seconds, 50 seconds for it to hit these temperatures already is not the greatest thing to see. But, uh, you know, Lenovo did configure this to have a 109 watt uh, long-term power, or excuse me, short-term power limit, which then exhausts itself to 96 watts over a long-term. Um, but very clearly, if I ran this for much longer than a minute or two, this would start thermal throttling, which I did run the 10-minute test after letting the system rest back to ambient temperature for a bit, and that netted us a score of just over 16,000, which is roughly a 10% performance drop part of which is going to be the fact that the long-term power limit is 96 watts versus a short term of 109. 
Um, but as you can see, and I'll zoom in again here, most of the cores were at high 90s and they averaged in the mid 90s with two cores peaking at 100 degrees. Um, the average power draw over the course of the run, which was just over 10 minutes because it started the run right after the 10 minute mark, or excuse me, right before the 10 minute mark, um, was about 84 watts. So it did thermal throttle down, um, which leads me to my recommendation. If you have throttle stop, I would definitely recommend going ahead, going into the t uh, turbo power limits and configuring this down to about 80 watts. Um, I did some further testing and this drops temperatures by another 10 to 15 degrees. Um, and it does not thermal throttle, so you can experience more consistent performance over time. And obviously you'll protect the longevity of your device. Um, I do know Lenovo is typically pretty good with their support, so I wouldn't be too worried about it. Um, but I, me personally, I would prefer slightly less performance, roughly 10 to 15% less performance for about 15 to 20 degrees less on less low temperatures. So moving along, I have a Port Royal score. This is just a single run. It averaged just over 26 FPS. Um, and of course, this is not a gaming laptop, even though it has the hardware and the panel for it. I would not really recommend it because GPU temperature pretty quickly approached 83 degrees Celsius, which is, I believe, the throttle point for this. Clocks started dropping at about 78 degrees, which was about 45 to 45 seconds to a minute within the test. Um, so I really, I mean, this is even after tearing the device apart, touching up the liquid metal to see if the factory application was poor, which it was decent. It wasn't great, but even after adjusting it myself to make it a little bit more uniform and trying some of the Honeywell phase change material, which is famous on the Lenovo Legion lineup, I still really wasn't able to tame those temperatures on the GPU side specifically. It would quickly rise up into the low 80s and then clocks would start dropping pretty quickly and it would start thermal throttling. Similarly, I ran Superposition at the 4K optimized preset and got an average of 56.94 FPS, which is not bad. Um, but as you can see, the GPU peaked at 86 degrees. Um, and that again happened pretty quickly. So even though this thing is capable of gaming, anytime you're stressing the GPU close to its total graphics power of 100 watts, no matter what thermal interface material I seem to use, it still throttles. So if you plan on using this for video heavy work, so renders, exports, things of that nature, it probably will not perform over the long term. You will probably get better performance out of different machines that have a slightly beefier cooling solution. I also went ahead and ran Time Spy, so you guys can get an idea comparing it to some other gaming laptops or other other components. The CPU score is pretty good, uh, 13,591 with a graphics score of just over 9,000. And again, this is this is a workstation machine first. I would, if you ever plan on playing games on this, it would probably be some lighter titles like esports titles. Um, anytime you're pushing the GPU beyond 60 to 70 watts, it, the whole machine heats up pretty quickly. And then lastly, I have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which got an average FPS of 105, and this is at the 1080p highest preset with ray tracing off. Basically all of these tests here, without sort of trying to neuter the machine or attenuating the machine to get uh, power draw down, the cooling solution just can't keep up with the hardware that's inside. And understandably so, it's pretty thin, it's very light. But I would expect that the vapor chamber solution, especially combined with liquid metal, would do a lot better than this. Um, so it was a little bit disappointing. But if for those that are still interested in getting this despite some of those shortcomings, again, I would recommend undervolting the GPU with MSI Afterburner, limiting the power draw on the CPU through throttle stop, adjusting turbo power limits. Um, some of the other things that I wanted to talk about briefly is fan noise. So as soon as the temperatures start ramping up, the fan noise would settle in between 48 and 51 decibels, probably closer to 4950, which is pretty loud. I believe my Legion still settles in at the high 40s, low 50s also, um, albeit drawing significantly more power on the GPU side and a similar amount of power on the CPU side. Um, 
ThinkPad fan control or TP fan control, if you do a quick Google, it does work. It controls the larger of the two fans inside, but it does not control both. So it's useful for CPU only loads or just, you know, desktop browsing, things like that. If you want a completely silent machine at all times under certain CPU temperature thresholds or other temperature thresholds, you can do that. Um, but ultimately, you know, no amount of tweaking that I can do, me disassembling the cooling solution, fixing the liquid metal, swapping out the liquid metal can really get the graphics card temperatures under control, which is a little disappointing. Um, so, I mean, that that's really all there is to it. If you do want to buy this machine, take those things into consideration. Perhaps get a lower tier GPU because you likely won't be able to eke out higher performance out of the higher tier SKUs anyway, such as the A3000, A4000, or 3080 Ti. I would say probably the highest spec that I would get this machine in is the 3070 Ti. And even then, there's probably better options in terms of cooling potential at the trade-off of maybe a pound heavier uh, with a similar actual desktop footprint, um, you know, four and a half to five pounds, um, but a similar dimensions, right? So 14 or 15 inches tall, 10 inches wide, things like that. Um, just other, other machines to consider, especially considering the price tag without some of the promotions here. I think this, the MSRP from Lenovo, is something outrageous, like $5,000 which no one should ever pay that. You should realistically, you know, try to find those coupon codes and stack them when you can. Um, but honestly, in terms of the overall package, I'm disappointed thermally, while externally the screen, trackpad, build quality are all fantastic. I don't think I would keep this machine myself just because of the thermal shortcomings and performance penalties that come with that. Well, guys, that wraps about everything up. Uh, I do appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my content. Please continue to leave me some constructive criticism, feedback, any other information you'd like to see going forward. I will try to answer some of the guys' questions in the YouTube comments. Uh, I don't have this device for a long time, so I try to get as much information that I think would be important for you guys as I can in a short amount of time. Um, I also will leave the link to the Reddit review that I wrote up. A lot of the same findings that I expressed to you guys in this video are going to be found there written, so it could be a little bit easier to refer to, particularly some of the benchmark scores, so this way you can easily compare between machines, things like that, if you're heavily weighing between two options. Um, but again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.